well, there you are, and this is the man at the centre of it, or at least that's the bunny at the centre of it. Robin, you the better Bunbury. explain. We've had David English in before, who's the author of Bunbury Tales, which is the book I've got here. Right. Um, and that is, what's that character called? This one's Ian Buntham. Oh, Ian Buntham, of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course. How did you get involved in the bun in the bun Bunbury Buntham? In the bun 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 Bunbury Bunbury. <laughs> yes. Well, no, uh, it was actually, it goes back about a year now, and uh, David English, as you've just mentioned, uh, actually got us all involved, and we worked along there uh, with Ian uh, Botham, Ian Botham, <laughs> not Ian Botham this time, no. um, Ian Botham in the studio, who is on the uh, next single from the project. There's, uh, there's about four or five other singles which are coming out, um, either before the end of the year and afterwards, including a Christmas single, all by the Bunburys, but with artists such as Eric Clapton, uh, the Bee Gees, and Ian Botham, if I can call him an artist, because um, he played on the actual record and uh, did some singing. So he's actually on one of the singles called Fight, which is what following... What sort of a voice has Ian Botham got? Um, he's got quite a good voice. Um, he's, in, in certain ways, I wouldn't call him one of the best singers in the world, but um, he, he did a good job. He, he, did, he did well. You've all got involved for a very good reason, because um, th there is a charitable side to all this, isn't there? It's not yes, just a sort of commercial uh, yes, toy. Yes. yes, and it's also uh, it's a, it's a great fun. And it's, it's unique. It hasn't, uh, it's talking about cricket, and cricket hasn't been highlighted in this kind of way for... Um... No, it's ju just to go on about the charitable side of it, I think mm. that a certain percentage of all the money made, all the profits, will go towards the children's home. That's right, that's what I believe, yes. Yeah. It is. yes. Yeah. But back to the bun... I mean, are you a cricket nut? I wasn't until th this occurred, actually, and getting together with Ian both, especially in the period where it was all sort of... Uh, um, tension and, and worry whether he was going to get into the, the English uh, side on, yeah. against New Zealand for the, for the Open. And we were with him in that week and it was, it was all sort of, I, I, I think it was, it was exciting because you, you sort of got into the spirit of it. He's a man of great charisma, isn't he? He is, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's also a great determination, knows what mm. he wants. Mm. I, love, I love the Bunbury CC First Eleven, I don't know if you've heard this. But Ian Buntham is of course the captain. Um, Robin Jack Rapid is the fast bowler. Dennis Lettuce has been burrowed from Australia. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <clears throat> Philip Ed Buns, John Ember Bunny, Golden Hair Gower, Bob Taylor, Rodney Munch, Viv Radish, <laughs> Colin Milburn, Graham Burrow, and Young Raj Bun. Oh, it's, oh, original lovely, names. Lovely ideas. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, look, how are your brothers? They're fine. The Bunbury Gs. Or, yes, yes yeah. they're, they're very well indeed. They're in America at the moment. Bungees. That's it. You ought to be called the Bungees. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be the director. Yes, I know. It's well thought of. But they're, they're all abroad at the moment. Yeah, they're all in the States. Mm. And you're over here. We saw you in the news actually taking part in the um, in, in that the... record. Oh, you're that, that the T-shirt? That's know? the T-shirt. Oh, what's that? That's the anti, Live anti, anti drug Live in World. It's a single. Comes out in two weeks' time. And we did it at Abbey Road Studios yesterday, yeah. uh, as they say, cliche, with a host of stars. Yeah. And uh, a who's who of the pop world. That's it, yes. Yeah. And uh, people like Madness and Frankie Goes to Hollywood were there. And uh, I think it's going to be a, it's a good record for a good cause. Did you come over to Britain for that, or, or did you sort of decide to, that was a good part, thing to um, take part of? No, no, I was actually here uh, for a rest. Um, we finished up doing the Diana Ross project, the Chain Reaction and things like that, which we had earlier. I didn't there. know that, you know, that you'd written Chain Reaction. Ah, well, you do now. Oh, you are clever, aren't you? <laughs> clever little boy. Yeah. Yeah, so we did. We wrote that one. And... Um, we're going to be making a new BG album in October for next year, for March. That's the first February. time in a long time you've right. put together on an album. Been writing for everybody else in between time, so now we're going to write for ourselves. No, but when you do that, when you take a long rest and then you come back and you do an album, he's yeah. getting in the way, is he? What do you think of it so far? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> when you do that, you emerge with a different sound. Is there a different sound going to come out of the Bee Gees this time? But it'll, it'll be an R&B uh, uh, profile on, on, the, on the actual uh, groove, uh, because that's what we enjoy doing the most. And... But I think it will sound different to what we've been doing. You won't hear the same BG mm. uh, record that, that people would have been used to hearing in, in uh, as we say, in recent years. Yes, yeah, still yeah. enjoying it anyway. Still oh, yeah, love it. it. Yes, Great. absolutely. Well, Robin, we'll talk to you again in a few minutes, and again to Ian Bunsen, of course, who is obviously the star. So it's not goodbye yet, is it? It's not uh, goodbye yet. It's, so time to, it's time to have a cup of tea. Well, can I feed Bunbury? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, what does he eat? Um, actually, ca ca purified carrots. Oh. Because only a baby. Oh. Put it in a blender. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Hmm? Right, we'll take a short break. You, at a young age, were involved in a, a similar sort of tragedy, weren't you? Yes, although it wasn't a hijacking, it was a train crash in Lewisham where about uh, 50 to 60 people were killed. And um, it was uh, something that I'll never forget because it was it, when you're brought so close. Not so much myself. I, I know the chances are that I could have been killed, 
but it's it's something that it's, it's seeing all those people as well that were less fortunate than you in such terrible injuries and uh, those who survived the injuries and those who died it was it was an awful an awful thing to experience but I think um, it's something it, it does make you a better person how old life, were you then about 15 16 and did it sort of haunt you in later life that experience? didn't haunt me but I mean it, it made me aware that uh, that we're not invincible that we're all that we uh, that we're only here for a certain amount of time and we have yet one is aware of dangers I suppose it's it's not good always to remember dangers in life but it does make you a little bit more careful and I think knowing that just makes you probably a better person what about today because you fly around an awful lot at the moment don't you are you oh, ever yeah. worried about well I, possibly I'm being an, you know the next hostage in a hijacking you just think that the odds are greater when you fly more uh, not the odds oh, well, well the odds come down don't they I mean, uh, when you fly more it's, it's the other way around <laughs> It's just the greater the chances are when you fly. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's uh, probably because I fly Concorde a lot. Uh, I know that sounds a little capitalistic, and I hate saying that I fly Concorde, but it's the only way in my business that I can get from one point to another in, in, a, quick sh in a short space of time. But the Concorde is such a vulnerable piece of machinery in terms of, uh, of being a target. That's um, interesting, yeah. and you always think that when you get on that plane. Well, I was in Washington once, and all these guys came on board, and we thought they were hijackers, but they were actually from the FBI. And they were doing, taking photographs of everything all over the plane. They were on the wings, taking all these different shots. And they said, we want to go half an hour on this stay over. We have to take a picture of the whole plane to make sure if anything hi hijack happens, we can move in. You see, and uh, that, that happens quite often. That's interesting. We'll talk more again later. Okay. But for the moment, let's go up to Wincy. Right. As you may know, the young lady sitting beside me is celebrating a birthday today. And uh, our guest, Robin Gibb. Cue Robin. There's a lot of queuing going has, on. Uh, a little gift for you. Oh, Robin. Yes. <laughs> Can I come round? Come over. Okay. Done. Oh, how kind. That's very That one's well. dripping water. I don't know Which where. Which one? Oh, oh, that, those are for you, Adrian. That's, that's for me. That's, that's yeah. those no, for no. Adrian. These are from Adrian to oh, you. These are from Adrian. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank, you, thank you very much, Adrian. Happy birthday. Thank you. Shall I open the card? Yes, open the card. Right. Oh. Get it off. I thought if I can give them to Sarah Ferguson, I can give them to you. Perhaps they will. Not quite the same. I wouldn't presume, but that's it. Oh, yeah. isn't that lovely? Look. You're a star today, it says. And, and every day, too. To Anne, love, Adrian. Oh, thank you very much, Adrian. How kind. That's uh -huh. lovely. And red roses, too. I actually you know, asked for pink roses, but never hint, mind. <laughs> hint, hint. Hint, hint to any men with, with ladies with, with birthdays. There's nothing like a red rose. It's everything. Absolutely, love. Smashing. That's really kind. Thank you very right. much. <laughs> <laughs> and what Bang are you doing on. there with that Not one that's dripping all over your this knee? This is the one that's dripping. These are from Harry Seacombe. Oh, bless him, because it's his birthday today, too. Yes, that's right, yes. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. It's also Judith Hamm's birthday, the presenter of Tomorrow's World. Mm -hmm. It's also our lady's birthday today, Virgin Mary's birthday. Oh, birthday. Much yes. oh isn't that lovely of Harry Seacombe there? Send me flowers, too. Thank you very much. What's happening next? Happy Picture. birthday. <laughs> oh, thank you. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Yesterday, our guest Robin Gibb was among the many showbiz and pop stars who recorded a new anti-drug single at London's Abbey Road studio. And our reporter, Moya Doherty, was very kindly oh, there. <laughs> Following the success of the Band-Aid single, Do They Know It's Christmas, people are prepared to listen when concerned pop stars get together to sing for a cause. Leading a major anti-drug drive, stars from the pop and showbiz world combined gathered in London's famed Abbey Road Studios to record an anti-smack single, Live In World. So why are celebrities giving their support? Why? Because I feel very, very, very strongly anti-drugs of all kinds. I, I, I can honestly say I... Long and cold existence you've been mine. But despite the enthusiastic lineup, organizers who had hoped that Boy George would join in the anti-drugs fundraising single Live In World were disappointed. What is the message in the song? It's, I mean, the met, where I come from in Glasgow, we're very down the earth about these things. If you take it, you die. It's, you know, it's a bit as simple as that. So, it's a terrible drug. I mean, I've seen it destroying some of my closest personal friends. 
And I think that first and foremost, you should wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, look. And this picture was taken shortly after that recording session. You, you've probably got an album a bit like that at home, haven't you? The Beatles Abbey Road. That is actually outside the Abbey Road studios, quite, quite near here in North London. And that person there crossing the road is Zach Starkey, Ringo Starr's son. Isn't that incredible? All Beatle watchers. But we have with us a BG this morning. We've got Robin Gibb with us Hi. this morning. It looks um, as though it'll probably be a very good record. I mean, we heard you there doing the back tr backing track, obviously. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's uh, it was that, that was during the recording. I mean, it's probably going to sound a lot better than that, mm. than we just heard, because that was just the basic. Do you feel very program. strongly about the message, anti-drugs, say no to drugs? Yes, I do. I think uh, uh, today, it's uh, children, uh, we say children, children, teenagers, people are very vulnerable to the... Uh, uh, to, to the wrath of drugs and I think it's time for everybody not just the kids themselves the parents to be very very much on guard you're part it's, of an industry which is incredibly vulnerable to drug taking it's the image entirely it's not doesn't mean that everybody in it is taking drugs because there's a lot of great people great sensible people in this business and there's those there that are not sensible and those who are irresponsible but they they're, but they're few and far between but they're there there's a lot of them and there's a lot that, that, that are, are very conscientious about uh, the kind of music and the kind of image that they reflect. Uh, but the image of the rock industry goes on and it's very hard to fight this kind of um, image when it's, 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 it's perennial, it goes on, it's because of what, what the actual rock industry represents. On, on a personal level, I mean, you've been at the, the top of the um, industry since the heady days of the 60s and everything. Well, very, very end of. End of very young. Well, of course, you're, I mean, no, you, say you were very young star. Absolutely, not, yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, I mean, even then you must have gone to the sort of rock, crazy rock parties and all those wacky times when you must have been off the drugs, surely. Well, yes, uh, uh, absolutely, yes. But uh, that didn't mean that, that we took them, of course. No, but it's difficult. And I'm not saying that we didn't try things. We did, because a lot of uh, uh, groups that have gone on, that have been around a long time, like the Stones, uh, and the Beatles, those who are not with the Beatles, of course, anymore, and those kind of groups, of course, they try everything, but uh, they learn from their experiences, and, uh, and they don't take them anymore. Do you think that you're therefore the best people to promote an anti-drugs campaign? I think so, yes, from experience, yes. There are y younger, um, newer groups and artists that, that, that know already that it's, it's wrong, but um, your young people, when I say young teenagers and people in, uh, in their early 20s tend to want to experiment, and I think it's when the opportunity is there and they make a lot of money very quickly. So very hopefully soon. you can influence people who buy your records in a very positive way. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Indeed. I think that's, it. that's the, the important thing. In, in all your vast time at the top, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it being, of course, um, noted that you started very, very young. That's true. Uh, is it as good now as it was then? I, it's always exciting because we're songwriters and we like to be innovative and change. And I think that's the great thing about uh, being creative is that you can always get a buzz because you're always changing. Whereas if you didn't write your own music or you didn't write for other, see, we've we written for other people as yeah, well. Quite a, a and heck do. of a lot. And that's and be hearing your music done through other people, and the way you want to hear it as well is also yeah. a great buzz. We well, were here today. Oh, you were you were talking earlier about Ian Buntham, your friend. Ian Buntham. There. Yes, that's your your cricketing friend. Yes. And I know that um, that it's all part of. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have been ringing and saying, where can you buy them? <clears throat> I don't know. I imagine toy shops. Yes. That, that's a pretty good answer, yes, yeah. toy shops. <laughs> I, I thought that was a pretty yes. good one. But, uh, but uh, it, there, is, there is something very good going on with this, and that's a sort of charitable project that's right, yes. that you and your brothers are getting involved in. Yes, that's right, and that's the, that's the key thing behind it, and of course, uh, the spirit that, it's, that it was done in. Mm. Um, it doesn't just have to be for cricket, but it can be uh, you know, for, for, for everything. Like and the bunny record is out when? Bunny record has just come out. Right. Yes. Uh, that's uh, probably why you're here today. Can I say a special hello to my children who are Bunburys right now, honorary Bunburys. Oh, they're honorary? Oh, of course yes. you can. My yes. son, Spencer Gibb. Yes. My daughter, Melissa Gibb. And my littlest one, Robin John. Yes, Gibb. Bunbury. Gibb, of yes. course. Robin I've John had Gibb. All called Gibb, yes. All called Gibb, yes. yes. That's true. Odd, isn't it? Yes. Anyway, look, give up to your brothers. Thank you very much for coming in today. Bat. Was that an honorary bat? Yes, it's a gift. <laughs> that's my first cricket bat. <laughs> Use yes. it well. Thank you very much, Robin. It's Thanks, love. Happy birthday again. We've got your flowers and some water now, haven't we? Yes. And we'll, like a florist here. And we'll be back in a few minutes.